My daily routine never changes really. Uh, probably I've done, been doing it for 10 months now, nearly 400 shows. I think I've had the same meal every single day. It's a sort of mix of um, OCD and um, superstition. It's slightly sad. And I should try and break out of it really, but I, then I think, oh, everything's going to go wrong if I do, so I don't. The way I work, one of the ways I work is I, um, during rehearsals I'll make lots and lots of drawings and lots and lots of pictures, paint things, and I'm constantly, now I'm sort of Pinteresting, you know, I'm constantly adding photos from the net and I stick them and paint them Ladies into my Ladies and gentlemen, script. this is your quarter hour call, you have 15 minutes please. So all through say 12 weeks of rehearsals there'd be more and more pictures, suddenly I'd be obsessed with Tom York and watching videos of him and then I'd be obsessed with prints. And then there'd be someone mentioned in rehearsal like David Barry or Peter Sellers or the guy who invented DNA or, you know, Charlie Chaplin or someone and then we'd just talk about them for a bit and I'd immediately get a picture and put them in and they became redundant and didn't become part of what I was doing at all. It wasn't really till we were in preview that we had it in front of an audience that I began to sit and think, yeah, this is how we speak, this is exactly who he is and, um, and this is where he goes, you know. Oh yeah, I, of course, watched both the movies before I began after I'd read the book. I mean, I have to say, I think Gene Wilder is absolutely astonishing. There was a kind of hilarious moment where I kept saying to Sam Mendes, when I come on, I think I should just fall straight down the stairs. And he kept saying, you can't do that, you can't do that. And I said, let's just be brilliant. He just comes on, falls downstairs, nearly breaks his neck, stands up, and he's just been tricking them. And then I when I saw the film, I realized that he thought I'd seen Gene Wilder do that and just wanted to kind of copy it. And it was entirely independent, yeah. So I'm just getting into my Wonka costume. So the book is very, very particular about, you know, what it should be. It describes exactly the purple jacket and all that kind of stuff. The boots are beautifully made. They're a bit worn out now, but... Um, so I wear the bottoms of the shoes out every four to six weeks with the amount of miles I run in the show. There's one that I hate, which is the hat. I hate the hat. I've always hated it. Um, the hat, particularly because it has a microphone inside it. So you can see inside the hat is where they keep the mic pack. And it makes the hat very, very heavy, and the mic pack gets very, very hot. So I, that's the bit. Once you've done eight, nine, ten months of this show, things like that begin to drive you crazy. I'd better put a jacket on. But the rest of it I love. So then, all there is, is my cane, and I have all sorts of series of canes. This one, it's made with a steel chain inside it, so I swapped these round. This is my favourite one. This came from me, when I was rehearsing, I had a sort of Chaplin-esque, bendy spindle of a cane, as he used, and then when we came to it, Mark had you know, designed this very, very solid thing, and I said, oh no, we've, I've got really used to all this way that he stands and all that. And we have one last magic cane. And this is the butterfly cane there. So that, oh, I can't tell you how that works, otherwise I have to kill you. And that, is it? Just the gloves, and then the cane. Have we forgotten anything? Golden ticket? Nope. And off I go as Willy Wonka. Gloop, TV, Beauregard, salt, bucket. Come in.